I originally wanted to start this video with a joke about me being super embarrassed by the fact that I like Thomas Kincaid's paintings, but then I just realized that it's something that I really don't want to joke about. I realized that I find it unoriginal and tasteless and uh, dishonest even. And uh, that happens to be my opinion about making a joke about Thomas Kincaid as well. Ha ha ha. Okay, horrible twist joke beginning check. Wait, you're not supposed to be recording this, you fu- Welcome everyone. So I just wanted to start a video with a few thoughts about Thomas Kincaid's works. So here's the thing, I know that it's a really controversial thing, but I like most of Thomas Kincaid's works. Especially those that uh, have like this Christmas theme. Somehow I just feel like they are really representing this overly cheerful, you know, this really western kind of holiday that Christmas became. And honestly, if there's one part of the year where everyone can like allow themselves to enjoy Kincaid's works a little, then it's obvious this part. So let's just, let's just go into this thing with a really positive mind and just, let's just give him that credit that, uh, these kinds of artworks are really easily digestible and cheerful things. And I'm pretty sure that this is why many people really like his works. They just have an all around uh, fortunate and really nice feel to it. And it's appealing to many, many people. So my, you might be asking why I'm talking about Thomas Kincaid now. Because here's the thing. Last year I decided to make a Christmas series of four paintings, all four of them inspired by Thomas Kincaid's works. Also, I revisited them this year and made some little animations. I also made two brand new pictures for this series as well, but uh, let's not go so much ahead. One thing I really wanted to change about the formula is many times Kincaid just made every single part of the picture a focal point and you know when the whole picture is a focal point, then you don't really have a focal point. And uh, you know, I like his works for the most part, but I really wish that they were much more character centric. Like, uh, you know, not 5% actual characters on the picture and 95% just background and eye candies. And don't get me wrong, uh, they can work when you have like a giant piece with all sorts of things. But, uh, you know, there are many of his works when there's just one single little character or two characters, like from a Disney movie or something, or maybe original characters, who just pretend to be the main attraction of the picture, but in reality, everything else besides them are the things that really matter on the artwork. And I'm not really a fan of that, so what I wanted to make is four artworks that are inspired by Kincaid, but they are character centric. They have a specific focal point and besides that they have this really cheerful and bright and colorful Christmas theme. Obviously one of my favorite things to paint are Harry Potter fan arts. And I wanted to make a little series about four canonical Harry Potter couples spending the holidays together. So these are not exclusively Christmas themed paintings. They are, they take place all around the holiday season with the first one uh, taking place a few days before Christmas and the last one being a New Year's Eve picture. And really all I wanted to show is how these people spend their holidays together. Our very first couple are Harry Potter and Ginny Weasley arriving to the bureau, both of them carrying a stack of gifts for every family member. Also, you see just a little bit of the bureau of this little entrance. You see the clock that shows the family members whereabouts. And all of them are at the same place because everyone is here right now, except one, maybe Arthur or Charlie, who arrive a little later. The only piece of decoration you see is that one on the door, but it's obvious that it's Christmas season, especially with the fact that it's snowing outside and the characters are covered with a thin layer of snow as they are entering their family's home. The second one is Hermione and Ron on Christmas Day. 
Obviously you cannot paint the Christmas series without a single fireplace image. So this is them exchanging their presents in their home by the fire. And the thing uh, revolves around Hermione dropping a tear when seeing her present. So the thing is that it's like a little easter egg that her present is a copy of the Necronomicon from uh, H.P. Lovecraft's fictional world. And this book is like so rare that even copies of copies uh, could only be found at uh, collectors. And guess what would be the best present for Hermione if not the really really rare book. Also obviously a lot of eye candy on this picture, a lot of little details that are completely unnecessary but I just wanted to fill the whole room with little details but also keep the main focus on the two characters. Like if you remove the whole fireplace area this picture should still work. Third picture Neville Longbottom and Hannah Abbott. This picture takes place after Christmas when they are taking down the decorations from the Great Hall at Hogwarts. Right now they take a little break, eat some leftover Christmas cookies and discuss their plans for the next year. Harry Potter and Christmas, you just obviously have to include a picture about the Great Hall. The Great Hall was like always there, it was always looking the best. They always made really nice set designs for that. And many people like the series sort of like Christmas movies because they always feature Christmas and they just have this little atmosphere. The same atmosphere associated with the many Christmas themed uh, Thomas Kinkade paintings. So I wanted to include this one. The hole itself didn't end up that great as I expected. Uh, obviously it lacks a lot of details. But overall I like how it turned out and I like how it turns into this little story. And the last picture features Rolf Scamander and Luna Lovegood. This picture takes place at New Year's Eve and they happen to be on an adventure together. And instead of fireworks they have the northern lines above them. And they are spending the midnight uh, sitting by this fire. Also I modeled the Rolf Scamander after Newt Scamander so that is literally the same coat that his grandfather had. I mean not literally the same coat, it's just one that looks like that. And uh, they are just spending this cheerful moment together on an adventure that they are going to continue the next day and uh, I don't know, find some artifact on those mountains or something like that. And I have to say that this one is my favorite from the whole collection. And uh, this one concludes my series from last year. These four paintings in total took about 80 hours and uh, it is not the end because this year I picked them up again to fix some things and to add brand new animations. And uh, here comes the part that is going to be much funnier for you, <laughs> oh boy. So I was thinking that it's going to be a piece of cake because I kept everything on separate layers and I can just switch off these snowfall effects and everything on the pictures and I will be good to go. I can create new animations for these things. Then I opened the file from last year and uh, you know this is what I saw. Bruh. So let me quickly explain what it is. So I kept all four pictures in one document in Krita. And what I did is every time I finished one of them I merged the whole group. So I have the first three pictures as one layer, as one merged group. So now I have to literally repaint parts of this background, like I have to repaint these planks and parts of that window. Oh boy. I thought that it was kept on a different layer. So apparently I was not willing to put in the effort to keep these pictures in separate documents or not even to just put the ones that are finished into separate documents. I literally just merged everything because I thought I'm never going to touch these again. And then comes the part that I have these, you know, layers of effects just merged together and I have to manually remove these snowflakes in order to add the new ones, the animated snowflakes to this picture. 
But here comes the funniest part and the part where I say that this document is like the whole engravement of my whole personality because let's just look at this. This one, the fourth one, I kept them all separate. Like at least I have the lights now so I can switch off the lights and I can use them to animate them further. <laughs> but here's the thing, the only reason that this thing is not merged is because I didn't even think about merging it. I just finished it, saved it as a PNG and called it a day. I didn't even touch this. I would have merged it like the other ones, but I was like not willing to put in that effort to make the file size even smaller. So I have to say that the only moment when I did the right thing was when I accidentally you know, messed up what I wanted. So this is when you say that the task failed successfully. Okay, let's see. The first thing I did, I cut out both characters. Now I can keep them on the top and I can put the animated snow below them. Then of course I removed the snowflakes manually, but the background is not complicated so it was like the easiest thing to do. Then I made the animation for the clock. So what I did, I copied the center part of the clock, I made two more arms and I saved them separately so I can animate them in the video editing software. And I made these little shining effects to the bells so they are going to glow up for three frames at a time. And one more thing that I did on all pictures, I wanted to fix up the faces of the characters, give them a little more uh, geometry, fix the really serious anatomical errors here and there, and of course rework every character's hands because they uh, looked pretty bad. I've been practicing hands lately so it became much better. And this is the final animation with the snow effect. Also the arms of the clock go back and forth because I wanted the animation to be loopable. So let's just say that they are standing right at the edge of the property and the clock is not capable of deciding if they are inside or outside. I had to start the next picture with removing the fire completely and repainting the bricks that were obscured by the fire. And like on the previous one, I reversed both characters' faces and hands, made them more anatomically correct and improved the lighting as well. Also a little credit, there's this streamer called Blinkens and he's been streaming while I was working on it and I asked for some little help so he gave me a bunch of feedback on what I should do with this piece. Go and check out his content. I wanted to animate the fire in Blender but I bumped into a lot of little technical issues and I lost patience so I just painted 5 frames from a fireplace video and played them on a loop. Some other fixes here and there and uh, here it is the final version of Ron and Hermione. I have to say that the animation of the fire gave a lot to this picture and uh, I'm happy how it turned out. Well the third picture, it wasn't hard to make, it was like a little grindy so what I did, I repainted those blanks, repainted the bars on the windows and I repainted parts of those bricks on the wall, you know just I don't know like a like two or three hours of work in total where I replaced these background elements and uh, painted over the snowflakes. I added all sorts of fog and uh, you know ambient occlusion and every sort of layers to match the original and uh, it turned out pretty nice. Honestly it was much easier than I expected. I zoned out a little and I finished the flames as well. I painted four versions and played them on loop, that's it, pretty much the same as the previous one. I added colorful lights to the Christmas tree that are switching back and forth, so it's like a halfway animated Christmas tree with lots of colors. Then I patched up Hannah's face and I fixed some of the issues with the hands and that's it, the final version of the Great Hall painting. Also now it is snowing inside the building like in the movies, so so the whole Christmas feeling is just captured in this picture in my opinion and I'm really really happy that I ended up making it much better with the animation. I patched up the fourth one and then came the animation part. 
Okay, so I've been thinking and I wanted to record this process because I thought it would look interesting in the end. So what I want to do now is animate, first of all modify and uh, animate these northern lights. There's a problem with these. These things go like way too close to the horizon and even the ones that are almost above us pretty much on the picture look like really vertical. I'm not sure if vertical is the right word for that, but here's the thing, I want to sketch it out really quick. This is our floor, this is where the two characters are sitting, here's the fire, and here's the viewer, and you know in the distance there are these mountains and everything, but the problem is, let's say this is the sky, if the sky was a sheet. What you are looking at right now when you see this picture, you see something like this. So what you see is these things are right here and they are much closer to the horizon than they should be. And uh, you know these parts that are like somewhere here because the parts that are above the viewer are obviously not visible, but the parts that are getting closer they just don't feel like they are that bigger compared to those ones. I should even bend it like this. So this is our sky now which is you know looking weird. What I want to do first is I want to make the lower parts further from the horizon and I want to modify the perspective a little bit. These things are going to become a little bigger than they appear right now. What I want to do is I want to like slice it into pieces like this. I want it to be sliced into three parts. Let's just let's try it out with only two versions for the time being. And I'm going to cut this to a new layer. Sorry, my recording software is struggling to record this because uh, Krita is taking up so much resources. Oops. So this is the preview of how it would look. And uh, one thing is obvious, I have to cut it into more parts than two, but it's going to work out if I'm uh, like not missing something really crucial thing about it. So let's just uh, start it over with the whole thing and cut it into three parts. And I'll have to do that in a separate document because I'm pretty sure that Krita is like... Uh, let's just say that Krita would uh, take vengeance on me for <laughs> doing all of this in just one document. It's like crashing any moment now. So I will see you in the next document in a second. I just realized that my face cam was covering the timeline. Okay, that's better. Okay, so we are in the new document. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to separate uh, this thing into three layers. And once we have those three layers, we can animate them. I don't want to record the whole uh, thing uh, real time. I just wanted to tell that. And also I forgot to add the fire. So I got, I'm going to make an animated fire on this picture as well and uh, that might be everything I wanted to say for now so let's move on. Okay so in the end the whole thing was a little more complicated than uh, how I imagined. In the end I figured out how to make it believable and also I made a copy of all the northern lights and I liquefied them and uh, right now it's like fading from one to the another so it looks like the Northern lights are moving a little bit on the bigger level, but there was one thing that I couldn't figure out So if you look closely, you will see that uh, right above Luna There is a flickering line in the Northern light. So that is a two pixel wide little artifact that just came into existence and I have no idea how it could be fixed like I could have uh, blurred it out in the video editing software but but that would have required me to put the whole thing through the encoding process once again and it would have really lowered the quality so I decided to leave that artifact in and instead keep the quality of the rest of the picture so I, I don't know I will have to experiment a lot and maybe I will figure out how to make that thing disappear I actually asked it on the Krita subreddit but nobody could tell me how that thing came into existence and how I could fix that. But it's such a little thing and I'm overall really happy with how this turned out and I also added the fire animation to the picture so that is it for this fun.
Okay, so these were the pictures from last year that I reworked and animated. Thank you very much for watching. And I'm coming with one more video this year. I want to release it at the 24th. So I made two brand new pictures for this series, the Harry Potter uh, Christmas series. And I don't want to spoil who are on those pictures. All I want to say is that last year I made four straight couples and this year I made two same-sex couples. Both of them are not canon, but many people like them together. So if you are interested, then, uh, you know, the next one is coming. So you know what to do. <laughs> but for now, thank you very much for watching. And as always, do some art and have fun while doing that. Farewell and happy holidays if we don't meet until then.